What's up, everybody? This is Levi and Tarka, and I am back with another episode of Maze. Uh, where we last left off, we got into this reactor room, and we returned power back to this facility. But now we don't have any direction of what to do next. We don't have any objects besides this English muffin, and our portfolio hasn't really told us anything, so we'll just go back this way and see what we can do. And so last episode, we went up that pathway, and we couldn't do anything there because there was a door with no handle, so we, we're, uh, we're not going to go up there. We know we came out through that way. We know that door is blocked off, and this is where we just came out, so... I guess that just leaves us with going up this pathway right here. Now, maybe there'll be something up here. It's Let's see. Dark in here. I can't see a thing. Perhaps if we turned around. Oh, don't be ridiculous. This is a perfectly nice place to stand. Well, I can't argue with that logic. Neither can I. Okay, that gives us a lot of information. They're not, it's dark, and they're not going to turn around. Door to hook room four. <laughs> And doors open. What is this stupid thing? Oh, this looks that looks like one of the hooks we saw earlier. And there's a grate for Vladdy. Control console slot. So we don't have a control console. And there's nothing else here, so. I guess we'll start with Vladdy. Have Vladdy check there. What is Vladdy doing here? Is this Vladdy's purpose? Crawling and climbing through stupid junk to get more stupid junk? And for what? This stupid garbage? This is useless! No use! No purpose! Just more garbage! Garbage for idiots! Always... Garbage. Hope this garbage worth Vladdy's suffering. But I already know the answer. No! Because it's garbage! <sighs> what stupid thing is next? Vladdy is really starting to hate vents. I wouldn't blame you. Alright, now we have a hook control console. Due to a communication error, this particular control this particular control console was designed to be removable from its base. It was lost approximately 60 times during the facility's existence. That's a bad idea to have it removable. And we know it goes here because we just saw this. Let's hit start. See what happens. So, this is what stupid thing does? Vladdy still think it garbage. That thing you did was important. Probably. Oh, there's a lot of bird poop on here. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Alright, so we got one hook raised. And a door wheel. You may have problem, idiot. You take too much garbage. So this door wheel looks like we can use it on the other door at the other end of this hallway. Uh, we we saw that at the uh, the last episode. So this must be what gets us in there. And I'm gonna assume that that room is another hook room because of the layout of this hallway and how each of those doors were designed similarly. So that's a bunch of rocks. Here we go. Okay, now it can be placed there. There's a door. We open up the door. Yeah, I was right. This is another hook room. Initiate hook activation. Okay. That does not sound good. 
Okay, that's not good. Tanya Vesilo. Why is this place so stupid? Nothing works. Idiot American machines. Well done, idiot. Breaking it will help. Stupid. You should take that dumb PC if you can fix it. Breaking everything won't help your progress. In case that wasn't clear. So we have... A broken gear half. A new path has opened to you. Head back to the communal grotto and down to level two. Um. All right, an item can be placed here. So we only have half of this broken broken gear half. You need to figure out a way to repair this broken gear if you want to raise that giant hook in the sky. The fact that you know nothing about engineering, mechanical repairs, or finding things. This means that this will probably go very smoothly. Exactly. And we see we have some boxes there, so we'll just have to get back to that. Now, it told us to go... It basically told us to go back where we came from, so... Let's find that big door we came through. Okay, the only path we can go. Now, let's see where this takes us. Ugh. I thought that was a sentient corn for a second. Alright, it's telling us to go to level 2, I think. Level 1? We can't... There's nothing over here. There were no boxes. Um... There's nothing in here. The only thing left are these... Uh, notes. Uh, that... I don't know what that is. And we've been here before. Oh. Everywhere. Yeah, this was... This was locked before. I can't read that. What does that say? Level 2, I think? So this is new. This must be where we're supposed to go. That is definitely where we're supposed to go, because now we're locked in here. And we have more... More garbage on the ground. More garbage. A lot of cans. This time Vladdy told you where he is from. Vladdy is from small box. Very dark. Yep. That stupid idiot brought him out the box and it was sad. Now we are here. Alright. Oh, we have a note here. Bob, you stupid dummy. Why you commissioned uh, that artist to make these maps is beyond me. They are unreadable. Everyone is getting lost down here. Cordially, Ted. Uh, that is not a map. That is a painting. Ah, uh, nice. Can't read it. Bob, I don't care how good a deal this got. Uh, you got no more lobbies. Idiot. Cordially, Ted. Yeah, there's a lot of... Quite a few lobbies. Okay, we got another book. A completely lazy mystery novel. After an unexpected hit, the mal... Uh, maligned author was forced to write a sequel. This time, he saved everyone the trouble of reading the book altogether and revealed the killer on the back flap. The novel actually chronicles the detective's struggle to return a pair of defective pants. Well, we know from the first book that he bought pants. Now he's selling them. Alright, let's continue. Oh, uh, we saw that... Uh... That... Thing here before. We got a water cooler? You are mistakenly trying to pick up something else, but now you are in possession of an entire water cooler. You are too stubborn to put it down, so you're going to find a, a, a use for it. Carrying it everywhere you go, you didn't even empty out the water. That's... Okay. What else do we have in here? So, that thing drew this on here at mean stupid whatever that is now a lot of bottles here and we've got a few things here outline for uh, for facility theme park and casino added to folio a very slick looking proposal to rework the facility into a high end theme park and casino resort has lots of pleasing looking graphs pointing upwards so you know for sure it's a good idea some notable attractions include Vatland, Genetics Kingdom, and Kitchen. Well, 
it looks like there's a drawing on there and in red, so I'm just going to assume that this was uh, Bob. Oh, and we got a red marker. You mistakenly thought this was a blue marker, but you didn't want to put it back down lest you hurt its feelings. Instead, you will draw a face on something with it because you know it likes to do that. Alright, now we have a marker. My god, Bob, what is this? There is no way in any conceivable universe that we can tr turn this facility into a resort. Stop it, you dummy! Cordially, Ted. Alright, yeah, that just confirms that, that Bob was trying to make this into a theme park. Alright, now we got everything in here, I think. Uh, let's just check the floor. Yeah, that's it. Uh, let's move on. Oh. Facial recognition security checkpoint. Hiya, Ted. Since you're so worried about security, I did you a favor and beefed up the doors to your room. You're absolutely welcome, Bob. Bob, you jerk. I can't even get into my room because of these stupid discount security measures. Fix it. I'm sick of sleeping in the grotto. Cordially, Ted. And... I think that's our water cooler. So we got a couple other things up here. I don't think a red marker will fit here, neither a broken gear half or... I'm just gonna start ignoring this English muffin. Workplace readiness report, added to folio. Giving up on the corn's ability to be weaponized on any level, the scientists at, uh, attempted to see if they could be of any use in, gen in the general workplace. They weren't, opting to take naps instead. However, the corn did display a fondness of stacking orange boxes, which they did so every chance they could, the goal of which seeming to be directing, directing the researchers to do what they wanted. Well, we know who's stacking those boxes, and we have a rocky rock. Now, this is a rock that knows its place in the world, unquestioning, unwavering, happy, and basking in its complete and utter rockiness. You have named it Shelby. And we have a statue. Oh, and another box. We have a sturdy box. This is absolutely, positively the sturdiest box you will ever find, except for the one you see immediately after you pick up this one. You now have what is known as Boxer's Remorse. And we have a couple... Oh. Oh. I didn't notice these. Were they, were they talking earlier? I missed it. What do you say? So, Bob, what do you think of this? See what you have driven me to, jerk? Cordially, Ted. Hiya, Ted. This is great. Really excited to see you get into the spirit of things. Added one of mine so we could be side by side. Really think it balances the place well, Bob. So, Ted decided to make his own statue and Bob answered back? It's a big statue. Right, let's check down here. There's a, it looks like a little office is down here. Oh, yeah. Let's get this box here. Alright, one less thing we have to carry in our inventory. Let's check down here. Ooh, a lot of notes. Hiya, Fernando. Oh, Fernando. Uh, we were introduced to Fernando in the first episode. He was the one out by that, uh, that tower thing. I think he was electrocuted. Hiya, Fernando. Could you be a pal and place the tour brochures across the facility? There's only a few hundred, so you'll be able to do that in no time flat, Bob. Fernando, you cretin, ignore that idiot Bob's request. What you really need to do is sort the samples in the genetics lab uh, from least reactive to most. So get on it, cordially, Ted. Hi, Fernando. Got a more important job for you than that. Need the statue directly above you moved about an inch or so. Scaffolding is already set up, so you'll finish it in about an hour or so. Thanks. Fernando, you lazy oaf, don't touch that statue. We don't need yet another insurance claim. 
Instead, go to the second floor of the barn and observe the corn's behavior in their habitat for several days, cordially Ted. So maybe that's the barn we already visited in the first episode. Okay, you're getting annoying. You need to go somewhere. If we go back up here, will you? No. And don't move a muscle, that'll throw the dad off, cordially Ted. Hi, Fernando, don't worry about that observation stuff. The corn will take their own notes. Really need you to hang about a few dozen new paintings that just came in. Be a pal and set that up. Would you please? Thanks. Bob. Fernando, you twit. Don't lift a finger for those paintings. Instead, use this pen. Draft a letter for me. Dear Bob, you are a nitwit and an idiot. Cordially Ted. Cordially Ted. And we have a book titled The One Second Assistant. A peculiar book on how to be an assistant in the workplace, whose end appears to be to do uh, as little as uh, as little work as possible. Chapters include how to shred everything, an intro into hiding in the office, and shifting blame to the intern. And a daily planner. The final page consists of six appointments. 9 a.m. Do nothing. 11 a.m. Pick up new fedora and glove. Noon. Torture stupid corn for amusement. 3 p.m. Hide to avoid work. 545 torture corn and 6 p.m. initiate master plan. So I wonder what that master plan is. Alright, we have a coffee trolley, which is out of coffee. No? No? Alright, we'll come back to that later. Medicine ball. You could have taken a much lighter ball for this particular task, but that would require a grasp of logic for you. A grasp of logic that you don't really have. Well, oh, there's something here. A, oh, master plan. Appears to be the only thing Fernando, the founder's assistant, put any effort into, aside from shredding important documents and wearing fancy fedoras and gloves. It's a very poor plan involving jumper cables, a strange lightning rod, and somehow turning into an all-powerful god. Notes read that the stupid corn told me their secret, and Bob and Ted will be my assistants now. So that is how Fernando died. He hooked himself up to that light. It looks like it seems to be a lightning rod. And thought he would uh, zap himself to be a god. Alright, we've done everything in there. There are a couple more rooms over here. Let's check this one over here and... Yeah, that's a dead end. Tin Company. It's the same drink. Alright, now we have this last room here. And this has to be Bob's room. You can tell by the painting there and by the mess. Oh, that looks like our medicine ball. And it looks like a plant. So maybe we'll have to look for something. Keep an eye out. Oh, we got pruning shears. Bob bought these to help maintain the large number of plants that decorate the facility. The small fact that they were all plastic and didn't need any maintenance didn't deter him in the least. Alright, let's keep an eye out for anything else. Bob's journal. Oh, this will be good. Oh. Okay. Written entirely in red pen. It it uh, it isn't so much a journal as it's as it is a mindscape with occasional pictures. Massive ambitious goals are written down and abandoned midway through in uh, inception and sometimes mid sentence. Well, that kind of seems how Bob thinks from what we uh, have experienced so far. Uh, what else is in here? Tell this place is gross by that dis that uh that green fog. Ooh, a box of monkey treats. Bob mistakenly thought that uh, capuchin was another word for delicacy, and ordered thousands of boxes to snack on. While he was told that the snacks were in fact for monkeys, he ate them anyway. Well, we can see them. That's not it. A navigational chart. Added the folio. 
It's a small navigational chart of the Pacific Ocean with a very peculiar course plotted from the United States to an island in the middle of the ocean. The course has more in common with the movement of a small fly than any nautical vessel. It's apparently part of Operation uh, Subaquanim, whatever this is, Avedir. But owing to your poor understanding of all languages, you mistakenly thought that it's a chain restaurant spe uh, specializing in Italian cuisine. Well, that's why I can't pronounce it. It's in Italian. Oh, there's a game system here. Well, it makes sense for this era because I think this place was, uh, what was it? 19, uh, 1983? And we have our gold toilet. Um, this looks to be another thing. That door's blacked out. Is there anything in here? So, what are we missing? Is that it? No. We need to find a plant. This is there a plant we can pick up. It doesn't look like there's anything here. Let's go back. And this way was definitely blocked off. Level 3 checkpoint. All right, we can't do anything there. Uh Oh no, that that's what we're trying to get into. We were already in here. Maybe um that, no, that plant doesn't work. We're in here. Maybe this one? No. Right, we might be a little too far. So let's... Oh! I didn't see this room. Uh, this is a cafeteria. Oh, here we go. Plastic plant. Take so many useless things, idiot. Here's a note. Bob, where is that idiot Fernando hiding? I told him to refill the coffee trolley with Ronka weeks ago. If you find him, put him to work and do some yourself. Buffoon, cordially Ted. What? Alright, what else can we do in here? So we got coffee, we got plants. We got a locked kitchen door and it can be opened from the kitchen. Now, do we have anything we can take? Anything helpful? That looks to be it. I'm just double checking, make sure we got everything. Alright. So that looks to be it. We know we can place this plant over here. Goes right here. And then uh, with our printing shears, uh, we could cut that. And I assume. No? Marker? Here we go. Alright. Now, I think this is all that we need. Do we just put it there and... There we go. Alright, now we can do this scanning. And of course it works. Alright, now let's check this out. So this must be Bob's room. Oh, that does not sound good. Aha! I finally found you! You've fallen into my clutches, just like all the others. I must say, I'm quite disappointed. I thought you were more clever, more interesting. But no matter. Now, your suffering will be so incomprehensible that your small mind will Stupid break! Stupid plant, why is your face like that? But, what is that? Your stupid face is very bad. Dumb plant. Is that on purpose? <laughs> Shut up, you mean... Furry stupid! How dare you! I am the pinnacle of my race! You will pay for this insult! Let me just... Ow! Uh, what's up, boy? Oh, get some new ow, age! Ow! You lazy law! Chief! If biting is cheating, I win by default! Ha 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 ha! Your plans have been foiled by... My plan! Which are better than yours, you... Dummy! Ha 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 And I am most certainly not retreating! Ha 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 ha! You know, this place is filled with idiots. So that happened. Alright, well, I 
Is that the first time we've confronted that thing? Let's check what else we have. Um, the door we can't go into. We have, oh, we have Ted's journal now. Written entirely in blue pen in perfectly sized paragraphs is the most depressing diary known to man. Highlights include many thoughts on uh, optimal sock organization, regrets of his partnership with Bob, and sadness that it is that is his own project. An experimental AI program couldn't get funded. Wow. And a concerned lab report. A lab report outlined, uh, outlining further tests on the facility's breakthrough test subject, the famed female Ruby Queen Corn. Much more concerning than the last one as it uses phrases like can't be controlled, the corn follow her, and too much British. Recommends sequestering subject as soon as possible until further notice. So we've already confronted the Ruby Corn as well. Oh, whoops. How do we go back? All right. Oh, here's another thing. An old newspaper clipping. It's a uh, local teens win big science award. It's an old newspaper clipping that shows a very young Bob and Ted winning a science award for an artificial intelligence prototype. Judging by their demeanor, their partnership hasn't changed much since then. The, ar the article notably praises the display's sick presentation spearheaded by Bob and completely ignores the sciency parts which Ted did on his own. So, we, we know now that these two have known each other since they were, what, teens for a while. A unicorn candle holder. Add it to folio. This is a candle holder carving of Dave, the legendary unicorn, brought to life by a hungover demigod. This magical creature possessed near-infinite foresight and a complete lack of spatial awareness. It fell to its death immediately after it was created. That's too bad. And a jar of Raka. Uh, a cheap knockoff of a well-known decaf coffee brand. Raka is unique in that it doesn't taste like coffee whatsoever. Instead, the makers went for the taste and texture of an old boot. It's the only thing that the uh, facility's coffee trolley delivers. All right, we saw that coffee trolley earlier. And now we have this jar of Ranka, which we need to go put over there. But we're actually going to do that in the next episode because we are running out of time. So with that being said, if you enjoyed this episode, make sure you leave a like and subscribe if you have not done so yet already. Otherwise, uh, I will see you in the next episode of Maze.